Hi, FBLA PBL members. My name is Kimberly Clark, and I am serving as the 2017-2018 National President for Phi Beta Lambda. Former U.S. President Ronald Reagan once said, the future does not belong to the faint-hearted, it belongs to the brave. This year, we are so excited to kick off this exciting alumni interview series so that they can share with you how they were not afraid to jump into promising careers and share some advice about how you too can be brave pursuing your future careers. Today, we are so excited to have Tori Armberger with us. Tori was the former Mountain Plains Region Vice President and is currently serving as a member of the House of Representatives for the state of Kansas. Of course, judging by what House of Representative members have to wear when they're on the floor. Tori is definitely well suited to share some advice with us. Thank you again for agreeing to be with us and share your story with us today, Tori. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Kimberly, for inviting me to be on this interview series with you. Um, I'm excited to just the fact that people are interested in FBLA PBL. And, you know, I definitely think that I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for FBLA PBL. Perfect. We're excited to hear all about how your FBLA PBL journey helped to shape your, your life journey. So the first question I have for you is, uh, could you tell us a little bit about your FBLA PBL experience and what inspired you to join PBL and become the Mountain Plains Region Vice President? Absolutely. Um, when I was a freshman in high school, my uh, computers teacher asked me to join FBLA PBL or FBLA in, at the time. And um, I was a little hesitant at first, you know, I was a freshman. I had an older brother that was the senior that when I was a freshman and, and um, I was just looking for my place to fit in. And so I joined up to the very first meeting, fell in love with it, which um, I'm not sure if I enjoyed business at the time or FBLA was the reason why I chose to go down the marketing path, path in the accounting path in high school. But I did, um, I was FBLA chapter president for two years in high school, went off to college. Um, there wasn't a PBL chapter or I wasn't quite sure if there was a PBL chapter. I remember my freshman and sophomore year um, in college there, I don't remember seeing one. But then I joined and uh, at Fort Hayes, where I went to school, um, we were our, it was called the Management Marketing Organization. And so it was FBLA and DECA together. And so I chose to go down the PBL path, why some of the people went down the DECA path. And then that's when I just knew I wanted to get more involved. So I ran for uh, state president. And so I won that election. And then I said, why stop now? So I went on and ran for Mountain Plains Region Vice President and loved every moment of it. I have some, some of my best friends were national officers at the time. So it's, I love every moment of it. And I, I struggled my first one, when, when I first got elected, I struggled because um, public speaking wasn't my strong suit. Um, and obviously now that's all I do. And I'm not amazing at it whatsoever, but it definitely helped me, um, I think one, the national organization just helped me in general, but two, at the time, you know, there's nine or there are eight other officers. I was one of nine officers and they all would go out of their way to make sure that I was, you know, getting my message across and making eye contact and smiling the whole time and <laughs> little things like that. Perfect. What were some of the highlight opportunities that you had as a PBL member that you might not have received as an FBLA member? Um, I think with PBL being on a smaller scale, obviously, I guess when I was a member, I think there's about 10,000 PBL members. And then there was over, I want to say maybe like 200,000 FBLA members. So obviously our membership was a lot smaller, but I felt like it was more of a family oriented organization um, because I feel like once you went to nationals and the people you saw there, you're going to see them next year and you become Facebook friends with them. I'm still Facebook friends with all these people. And they remember when I would, you know, I got to go to Georgia PBL and speak to uh, the state of Georgia at their state conference. And 
I still to this day, I talk to all of them and it's, they, they remember little things that I've said. And, and I, it's, like I said, it's just, it's a family or organization in my opinion as well. You're absolutely right about that. The family aspect of PBL is one of the reasons why so many people, including myself, keep coming back. The next question I have is how has being a member of FBLA PBL impacted your life and how did it help you to achieve your position in the Kansas House of Representatives? Um, as I said earlier, it helped me with public speaking. Um, obviously, I'm no pro at it, but it really helped me get outside of my comfort zone. And um, I can still remember, and I joked about it the other day, I had, um, we had CTSO day at the Capitol and um, the DECA state officers for the high school level came up to the Capitol. And what are the odds that one of the other representatives that I serve with, he's, he lives in Topeka, he was a national officer for PBL. And so he was Mountain Plains Region Vice President, and then he was the national president as well for PBO. And so that's kind of how him and I became good buddies to begin with. But so him, myself, and two other representatives, we got together and we we met with this with these group, with this group. And um, I was joking with them that I remember the day that when I um, oh did my speech at nationals that I wanted to run for national vice president of Mountain Plains. Um, how oh, it was so awkward. If anybody was there, they remember that I was making these like weird noises in the microphone and I was not making any sense at all. And I just like wanted to break down in tears and within a year, so much has changed. And so I think that was, I don't know. I look back and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, if I did not do, if I was not a national officer, that's how I would be today. And I would be making weird noises at public forums or something like that. So in a roundabout way, I hope that answered the question, but I had to have to throw some humor in it. I'm definitely glad that you don't make weird noises on the Kansas <laughs> House floor. It's probably I, mean, I don't think I do, but maybe I do. Who knows? <laughs> the next question I have is, what was your dream job when you were a kid? Actually, when I was a kid, I was going through um, some stuff at my parents' house a while back. And um, I just remember all these kids, they said, oh, I want to be president or I want to be a pro football player or something. No, I wanted to do two things. One, I wanted to be a Walmart greeter and hand out the little stickers at Walmart. Or I wanted to be the manager of the buckle because that's our only one of our only clothing stores we have in Great Bend. And that's... That's all I wanted. And when I was in high school, I got to work at the buckle. And I said, eh, I did that. I don't know. I don't want to do that anymore. So I'm assuming you don't want to be a Walmart greeter anymore either. <laughs> maybe, maybe when I retire, I could be a Walmart greeter. <laughs> That's a good goal. <laughs> um, what was the process to becoming a member of the Kansas House and what was the election like? And so what all did you have to do to secure your position? Um, so I came in uh, with not a lot of help. And when I say that, I mean that as I wasn't scouted to run. So I didn't get the welcome to running for the Kansas House Legislature. Um, this is what you need to do. So I filed and... Um, it was, it was a nerve wracking experience. I had a little bit of help from some people back here, um, but we'll be honest, we'll be the first one to tell you, we had no idea what we were doing. So um, first thing we, you know, created social media, get the word out, go to, go to as many events as we could. Um, and then I, due to my press release, um, the representative from Dighton, Kansas, which is Western Kansas, um, he has, he is actually now our majority leader, but at the time he wasn't reached out to me and said, I want to help you. I want to be your mentor. And thank goodness that he did that. Um, so he helped me out quite a bit. Then once I was elected, um, it was luckily I was an intern. So two years prior, I got an intern for, it was underneath the governor's internship program. And I interned for the department for children and families. And at the time I was looking at law school. And so I was in court learning about child support um, cases and stuff like that. Let's just say it quickly changed my mind. 
but I kind of had an idea. I, that's how I got to learn about the agency side of things and legislature was still in session. So I had to learn kind of like how that worked. Um, and then the next year I interned for another representative. And so I was driving from Great Bend to Topeka, which is three hours one way, twice a week. And so I was on the road for six hours a day, twice a week um, to, again, learn the process. So that helped me out coming in as a freshman, knowing, you know, parliamentary procedure. We actually use we don't use Robert's rules of order on the House floor. I'm very familiar with Robert or uh, with I'm, I'm very familiar with Robert's rules of order. We use Mason's rules of order on the House floor and it's a little different. So that was interesting to me. Um but I, that I had, I already knew how bill, like how to create a bill in the process. So that helped out. Um, but so that was kind of, as a freshman, I, I was learning, but I kind of had that one step up because I, I've been up to the Capitol twice before. So, and now I'm on my second year and, and I'm still learning, but at least now I know where the bathrooms are. So that's a positive in the Capitol. <laughs> As a member of the Kansas State House of Representatives, you are responsible for preserving the well-being of the citizens of your state. Um, but other than that, what are some of the more behind this behind the scenes things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis? So we started up the uh, 2018 legislature um, the second week of January. So, um, you know, we're just getting back in the grind of things that we have. We have a nine, nine o'clock committee meeting, and then we go on the House floor at 11. Um, usually we try to do some type of meeting over lunch. Um, I have to say, I think my favorite meetings would be, have to be, for during the lunch period, would have to be um, on Wednesdays, the Rural Kansas Caucus gets together, which when you look at, um, when you look at representatives, at least in the House, or no, at least in Kansas, but maybe it just kind of depends how every state, every state does it differently we're based off population. So I represent about 22,000 people and there's 125 house members and 40 senators. The senators represent about 77,000 ish. Um, so of course, you know, when you get into the Kansas city area or the Wichita area, there's multiple representatives versus me. I, my district geological size is going to be a different size. than um, for some people, it's just a couple blocks by a couple blocks. So when we talk about rural Kansas, that we have completely different issues. So I think those are my favorite. And we always had the best food. Like this week we had lasagna for lunch. So I was pretty excited. Um, but I think that's my favorite part about the lunch period. And then right after lunch, we have another committee meeting at 1.30. And then we have another one at 3.30. So in between these committee meetings, they can't go over an hour and a half because the rooms are blocked and the Senate has a different schedule than we do. So within those 30 minute time periods in between the committee meeting and the next one, that's when we try to meet with constituents and follow up on our email and stuff like that. Um, so that's kind of the day to day. And then at night we have different receptions that we go to. Um, and then when we're not in session or like on weekends, we have chamber coffees. Um, like I have one coming up where uh, it's the Great Men Chamber Coffee, and everyone's welcome to come. And we try to invite as many legislators from the area as we can, and just people come. And we we give a little spiel about what we've done so far, one of our favorite things that we favorite bills that we've been carrying, and then um, people ask us questions. And then when we're not in session, like this is an election year, so I'm going to be campaigning again, and um, all that kind of fun stuff. And then we like I travel all across the state whenever we're not in session to go to different um, like, for instance, Mental Health Awareness Day will be in Dodge City. So I'll go down there and go to that. Um, we have another one where we uh, we did a, a, a tour of the Kansas roads in western Kansas. So we rode on a bus from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and just looked at roads all day long. So there's just different things that we do and and. Uh, so, I mean, I think that's my favorite part of the job is it's, it's, it's just change of pace. And um, I never know what my schedule, even though my schedule says this, I, it never usually works out that way. But What's the most rewarding aspect of the position and the most exciting thing you've done so far during your term? I have to say 
the most rewarding and exciting thing would be just, you know, and my degrees in business ed. So when, when I am teaching and I'm helping a student and when they just get it or when they are just, you know, they're struggling a little bit and you help them out and you just, you see them excelling. So that's when I bring it back on the legislative side, when I have somebody come up to me and say like, I have a problem and I just, how do I fix it? Just knowing that like, I have this book of resources and maybe I can just call this person real quick and we can get them hooked up and we can get this problem fixed. Um, and then just seeing the big smile on their face afterwards, they like, thank you so much. I've been trying so hard to get this done. Um, Constituent services is the key to winning any state office. And or any elected position in general, not even state, even if you want to be mayor of your town, constituent services is how you get elected. And because they're the ones who vote for you. And if you're not doing a good job, they can vote you right out. So, you know, keeping them happy, which, of course, you're not going to make everybody happy. Um, I think a typical thing for me is after church is whenever I get stopped by people uh, just asking me, like, how are things going? Or, hey, I have this problem. Um, we're at Walmart. I get stopped all the time at Walmart. I'm usually, I feel like I'm usually in the toilet paper aisle forever talking to somebody about an uh, issue that they have going on. Sounds like you're practically already fulfilling your goal of being a Walmart greeter already. <laughs> basically, basically. <laughs> so on the flip side of the most rewarding aspect, what would you say would be the biggest challenges of your position? I think the biggest challenge is knowing that no matter what you do, you won't make everybody happy. And, um, you know, you have to develop thick skin and I've had some pretty nasty phone calls or people have said some pretty nasty things to me in in public forums or in emails or, um, or they'll say like, I don't know. It just, it makes you wonder like what in their, what in their great, like, why would they say some of these things? But, um, I don't know. I, I think that would have to be the most difficult part is when you push that button, either yes or no, when you're voting, it's not, you're not going to make all 22,000 people happy. And it, it's a lot of pressure. Definitely. Um, how many members are there currently in the Kansas house of representatives and uh, how long is each term and are there any term limits? Um, in the Kansas house, we have 125 members uh, it's a two-year term, and so uh, June 1st at noon is when we have to uh, decide if we're going to refile or not, um, and the, we don't have term limits on the House. We, do, we don't have term limits on the Senate. The, um, our governor and lieutenant governor, we just have term limits on that, but our attorney general, he can be up there as long as he wants to, so... What are your plans for the near and distant future? Do you plan on rerunning in 2018? And how long do you plan on staying? Or is everything just kind of up in the air for now? Um, I do plan on filing for re-election. Um, I just haven't done it yet. And future, I just go another term and see how things are going. It's all the Speaker of the House decides where what committees we're going to be on if we're going to be in leadership where our parking spots are like little things like that where our offices are so it's one of those deals where if he feels if i would be a good leader then i'd be blessed and maybe work my way up as a vice chair and go from there um yeah as of right now though i just i'm just living the dream and excited to be in this position perfect the last question I have for you is what advice would you give to any FBLA PBL members who are thinking about pursuing a career in politics and government themselves? I would just say, try to get involved as much as you can. Um, that's what I did. And I, I mean, I had no political connections before and my family's not really into politics. Um, I just, one day I, I remember I got involved in student government and that was kind of my first election. And then I interned and then I had another internship. And so it was just one of those deals where I got involved a little by little at a time. I got involved on a um, U.S. Senate campaign. I was 
I was the county chair for my county. So it was just, it was a little thing like that and working my way up. So there's just, that's, that's what I, that's the advice I would give. And my next thought would just be to, if just whatever, if you want to be, if you want to be a state Senator, then you can do it. Anybody can do it. First thing, watch what you put on social media. But after that, you can do whatever you want to do. And I'm a firm believer in that. Perfect. Thank you so much. I definitely appreciated you taking time out of your busy schedule to share with us some of the things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis and uh, give some advice for people who might possibly want to be where you are one day. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Kimberly, for having me. And and if, any, if anybody has any questions or any wants to get involved somehow, uh, please reach out to Kimberly and she can give you all of my contact information. Perfect. Thank you. And to all of the FBLA PBL members watching, hopefully this interview series is going to help you elevate your future. And we can't wait to see what you, all of you are going to do in your future as well.